In this video, I'm going to show you how to add animator LOD to your project. This is a tool which can automatically optimize the animators by reducing the quality when they are further away from the camera. So the perceived quality is still very high and you could get a high performance uplift using this tool. So how to add this tool in your project after you have bought it on the asset store, the link is in the description below. You need to go to the package manager and under my assets, you should be able to add it. Right now it is not on the asset store yet. So I'm going to add a package right here. But again, you should be able to import this from the asset store package manager there. So once everything is added in your scene, you need to add the animator LOD manager somewhere. It doesn't really matter where it could even be on your main camera. For me, I'm just going to make an empty object. And this is something which is just going to be stationary and it has the manager. On the manager, you can select this to run at start. If you disable this, you need to start it via your own script. So you can toggle this basically however you want in your project. So if it is a scene with a lot of skin meshes, you can enable this. And when there are not that many, you can keep this disabled to show the full quality of all the animators. Here are the LODs. So basically anything under 10 right now, a distance of 10 meters will be at full quality. And right now, 10 meters is still at full quality. So if it's a frame count of zero, that means it runs every frame and it has a bone count of four. That means it uses the full skin weight of four. Once it's past 20, it will skip one frame. Once it's past 30, it will skip two frames and both of these have the skin weight at two. And when it's distance three, uh, and when it's distance 40, it will skip four frames and the bone quality will be at one. So right here, I got some animator set up for Mixamo and I made a little prefab to do this more easily. And pretty much on the root, you can do this anywhere on your object, but it is recommended to put it at the root. You can put the animator LOD object. Once it's here, you see a few fields. You can just leave this at the default. That is fine, that would work. You can also disable the change skin weight. If you disable this, the skin weight will stay the same as it is right here. So right now this would be auto. If this is checked, it will use the skin weights from the LOD manager unless you put that at auto as well, obviously, but then I would just recommend to disable it here. These fields can be left at the default. The animator and the transform will just get the current animator and the transform. So basically the same as doing this. And the skin meshes just get all the childs. So like this. This is how it would automatically be set up. But if you want to tune this yourself, if there is a certain child you want to track for the transform, or a certain animator you want to track, that could work for sure. And you can also put your own uh, skin meshes in there. For example, if you just want to update the beta joints and not the surface, you can do so. That would absolutely work. Now let me remove these. And we're down in our scene, you could see that all the animated prefabs have their own animator LOD. So first I'm going to show you how this performs while it is disabled. You can see it hovers around 30 FPS with around a thousand animators. Note that this is a lot of animators. In real life projects, you are probably not going to use this many animators, but know that you could, especially in the new Unity 6 versions, the batch GPU skinning can perform really well. So that's great. Anyhow, back to the project, we can enable the run and start again. And if you disable this, you can again do this from pretty much any script you want. And you can see we got about a 50% uplift in performance, even more. So right now this is at around 47 and you see that all the other animator, animators up close are still very smooth. If they go a bit further away, they are a bit less smooth and so on and so on. Of course you can tune this and you can even tune this right in the editor. So if you want these at one and maybe this one's still at zero, you see everything smooths out a lot more. But the downside is that the performance is starting to decrease, which is logical. We can put this all at one. This one at two. Performance might increase a little bit. Not that much. Skin weight isn't that heavy to run since batching the actual draw calls and rendering everything is usually the more heavy operation. But again, it's still cool that you can do this. And of course, if you are messing around with settings, so this one, oh, that should be 25. 
you can automatically order these with the button. That's just a small feature. But anyhow, this is the project. It can definitely help with the performance if you have a lot of animators out there. And many other games, like for example Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, use this technique very heavily. I don't recommend to go to that extent because it looked really bad, even up close. But you can implement this for sure in your project and get some great performance boosts with animators. So again, the link is down in the description below if you want to try it out. It is on the asset store. It is going to cost about $20. Maybe it will be on sale a few times. There definitely will be a launch sale. So if you see this video at launch, definitely check it out because it will save you some money. The link is an affiliate link. So I get a small percentage of that without costing you anything. So thank you if you are willing to use that. And, and let me know what you think of this tool. You can do so in the comments, on the asset store in a review or on the forums. Everything again is linked in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.